Welcome to another episode of the Overkill series, where we take a fairly simple mathematical result and we prove it a very, very difficult way. And today we're gonna to look at something which I sometimes call the most surprising mathematical formula, and that is one cubed plus two cubed plus n minus one cubed plus n cubed is the same thing as one plus two all the way up to n minus one plus n quantity squared. In other words, when you bring this square inside of this big sum, it turns, it turns into a cube. So this is fairly simple to prove with induction, but we're gonna prove it using generating functions because generating functions are my favorite way to overdo any problem. And so first of all, we're gonna prove a tool and that is if CN equals one plus two all the way up to N, in other words, it's the nth triangular number. Then the sum as n goes from one to infinity of c n x to the n is equal to x over one minus x cubed, where we're thinking about this as being expanded as a power series. And I'll go ahead and give that thing a name. That'll be capital C of x. So let's get to proving this tool and then we'll do the main result. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna notice is if we take cn minus cn minus one, that's gonna be one plus two plus, then we have n minus one plus n, and now we're subtracting one plus two all the way up to n minus one. So notice most of the terms of cn are actually in cn minus one as well. In fact, everything up until the last term cancels, and so we get n. And so in fact, this is like a recursion for the triangular numbers. It's a pretty simple recursion, but it is a recursion. The next thing that I'll do is I'll multiply both sides of this equation by x to the n, and then I'll sum over all positive values of n. So that's gonna give me the sum as n goes from one to infinity of cn minus cn minus one times x to the n is the same thing as the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n times x to the n. Now we wanna rewrite both sides of this equation just very, very slightly. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand this sum into two pieces by distributing this x to the n through. So that's gonna give me the sum n equals one to infinity of c sub n x to the n minus the sum n equals one to infinity of c sub n minus one x to the n. And then on the right side, I'm gonna factor an x out and rewrite this as the sum n goes from one to infinity of n times x to the n minus one. Now what we wanna notice right here is that this is the derivative of a geometric series. And we can see that by noticing that if we take the derivative of the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of x to the n, then we get exactly this. But now we can apply the ge geometric series summation formula, and that'll give us x times the derivative of one over one minus x, but that's the same thing as x over one minus x squared because the derivative of one over one minus x is one over one minus x squared. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the left-hand side of this. So notice I can go ahead and take an x out of this and then re-index this thing. And we'll see that this is the same thing as x times the sum n equals zero to infinity of c n x to the n. So what did I do here? I took an x out and then I re-indexed. And then another thing that I can very, very quickly do is notice that c sub zero is equal to zero. So I might as well add the zeroth term back in here. But now notice that this is just equal to c of x. And then this right here is equal to x times c of x. So we have c of x. So we have c of x minus x times c of x is equal to x over one minus x quantity squared. In other words, we have one minus x times c of x equals x over one minus x quantity squared. But notice that this is equivalent to what we have for our tool. In other words, c of x is equal to x over one minus x cubed. So we're done proving this. 
Okay, so we're done proving this tool and now we're ready to prove our main result. So I've renamed the top part and the bottom part of this equation so it'll be easier to work with. So I've called the top part of the equation a sub n. So we have a sub n is one cubed plus two cubed all the way up to n cubed. And b sub n is one plus two all the way up to n quantity squared. So our goal is to show that a sub n is equal to b sub n. And like I mentioned before, we're gonna do this by looking at um, generating functions for each one. So we're first going to calculate the generating function for a sub n and then the one for b sub n and we'll show that they are the same. So the first thing that maybe we'll do is look at a sub n minus a sub n minus one. And notice that's gonna be one cubed plus two cubed all the way up to n cubed. So let's go ahead and write that down. One cubed all the way up to n cubed minus one cubed all the way up to n minus one cubed. But again, just like before, most everything cancels and we're left with n cubed. Okay, and now we're gonna multiply everything by x to the n and then sum over all positive values of n. And so that's gonna give us the sum as n goes from one to infinity of a sub n minus a sub n minus one x to the n equals the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n cubed times x to the n. Okay, so just like before, this thing has a pretty nice form, and the form of this left-hand side is given by one minus x times a of x, where a of x is the generating function for a sub n. So in other words, we have a of x equals this sum, n equals zero to infinity of a sub n x to the n, where the zeroth term is equal to zero, which is why we don't have to worry about it too much. Okay, so now let's see what we can do with the right-hand side. There's actually a bit of a trick here. So what we're gonna do is take this n cubed and rewrite it in a basis of falling powers because falling powers will give us derivatives in the generating functions. So let's see what we can do. We can write n cubed and then for our cube term, we'll need an n times an n minus one times an n minus two. So let's include that. But now we've already included some terms that are not present on the left-hand side. Notice we haven't included a negative three n squared if you were to multiply that out. So we'll add that back in. So we need to add back in a three n squared, but we have to do it as a falling power. So that'll be plus three n times n minus one. But now you look at the coefficient of n in this whole thing. So in this first term, there's a plus two n. In the second term, there's a minus three n. So that means we need to add n back in in order to make everything cancel. So we have that nice expansion there of n cubed in terms of falling powers. And now we can go ahead and rewrite this sum using that expansion. So I'll just bring this down. We have one minus x times a of x is equal to the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n times n minus one times n minus two times x to the n so that's the first term. The second term is gonna be the sum as n goes from one to infinity of uh, 3n times n minus one times x to the n. And then finally the sum n equals one to infinity of n times x to the n. Okay, but now in order to really see these as derivatives, we need the exponent here to be one less than the ending point of the falling power. In other words, we need an n minus three in the exponent here, an n minus two in the exponent here, and an n minus one in the exponent there. But we can get that just by factoring. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna take out an x cubed here. And now, since the first couple terms of this are zero, because if we plug in n equals one or n equals two, that cancels that. I'm gonna go ahead and start this at n equals three to infinity. And now we have n, n minus one, n minus two, x to the n minus three. And then the same kind of thing here, I'll take out a three x squared, and now I have the sum n equals two to infinity of n, n minus one, x to the n minus two. And then finally the sum n equals one to infinity, and this is gonna be multiplied by x, n times x to the n minus one. Okay, great. Now let's do one more step before we erase some stuff. So notice that's gonna be x cubed, and then it's the third derivative 
of just the plain old geometric series, which is the sum of x to the n. So I can go ahead and sum that together. So that's going to be the third derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. Again, we are expanding 1 over 1 minus x as the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n. But notice if we were to take the third derivative of that, we would get exactly this coefficient. Now we can do the same kind of thing here. So that's going to be plus 3x squared. And then it'll be the second derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. And then finally plus x. And then we have the first derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, great. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring that up here and then we'll get a closed form for a of x. In other words, this generating function for our sequence a, which is the top part of our goal equation. On the last board, we built an equation for a of x, which was the generating function of a sub n, which was the sequence defined by the top part of our goal identity. And that was 1 minus x times a of x equals x cubed, the third derivative of 1 over 1 minus x, plus 3x squared, the second derivative of 1 over 1 minus x, plus x times the first derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. So now let's go ahead and calculate this right-hand side, work it down until we have a closed formula for a of x. So let's go ahead and do that. So no, notice here we're going to have x cubed. Now when you take the first derivative here, you'll get 1 over 1 minus x squared. The second derivative, you'll have to multiply by 2. And then the third derivative, you'll have to multiply by an additional 3. So that means in the end, you'll multiply by 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. So you'll get 6 over 1 minus x to the fourth, because you raise the exponent on 1 minus x three times because we have three derivatives and it's in the denominator. Okay, good. Now we're going to do the same kind of thing over here. The first derivative will just make this 1 over 1 minus x squared. The second derivative will multiply it by 2. So that 2 will combine with that 3 to give us 6x squared over 1 minus x quantity cubed. Again, we raise that exponent by 2 because there's two derivatives. And then similarly over here, we have the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x is 1 over 1 minus x squared. Multiplying by x, we get that. Okay, so now we want to build these denominators so that we can combine everything. So I'll multiply this one by a 1 minus x. I'll multiply this one by 1 minus x squared. And so 1 minus x squared is 1 minus 2x plus x squared. Great, and notice that's going to turn this 3 into a 4 and this 2 into a 4. Okay, fantastic. So now let's look at what the coefficient of x cubed is. So we're going to have x cubed from this term, minus 6x cubed from this term, and then plus x cubed from that term. So there's a single x cubed that's left. Now let's look at the coefficient of x squared. So we have 6x squared from this term, minus 2x squared from that term. So that's going to give us 4x squared. So plus 4x squared. And then notice we have a single x term, and that's from this. So we'll have plus x, and this is all over 1 minus x to the fourth. But notice that's not our a of x, that's 1 over x times a of x. So that means in order to get a of x, we need to divide by another 1 minus x. So that tells us a of x equals x cubed plus 4x squared plus x over 1 minus x to the fifth power. Great, we have a closed form for our generating function for the top part of our goal identity. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up and then we're gonna work on the BN sequence. Okay, so we just got a closed form for our A of X generating function, which was the generating function for A sub N, which was given by this sequence of numbers, one cubed plus two cubed, all the way up to N cubed. Now we're gonna work on our BN sequence. Hopefully we get the same generating function and that will prove this identity. So we're gonna approach this the same kind of way. We're gonna look at BN minus BN minus one. We're gonna multiply this whole thing by X to the N and then we're going to sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, just like we did before. And we're taking b of 0 to be equal to 0. So notice what we get here, especially after writing this interior as c sub n. We have that this is equal to 
the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of cn squared minus cn minus 1 squared times x to the n. So I've just rewritten my bn as my cn squared, where again cn was this nth triangular number. Now I want to factor that right hand side as a difference of squares. So I can do that. I'll get the sum n equals 1 to infinity of cn minus cn minus 1 times cn plus cn minus 1 times x to the n. Okay, good. But now we know that cn minus cn minus 1 by some calculations that we made before was just n. But that means we can replace cn with n plus cn minus 1. And that's going to allow us to write this bit as 2cn minus 1 plus n. Great. So now let's see what we can do with that. That's going to give us here the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of uh, 2 times n times cn minus 1 x to the n. So that is from this n times this first term. Okay, good. And then I'll go ahead and write the other bit in another sum. In other words, this n times the second term, I'll put in another sum. So that's going to give me plus the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of n squared times x to the n. Okay, great. Now I want to do something similar that I've done in the other cases. And I want to notice that this left hand side is going to be 1 minus x times b of x. So that's exactly something we've done in the other cases. So I don't need to labor that too much. And now I want to rewrite this a little bit. And so we want to visualize this as a derivative of our c of x generating function. So I can first re-index this so, so it starts at n equals 0. So in other words here, I'm going to send n to n plus 1. Notice that's going to change my starting point from 1 to 0. And that's going to give me here this sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2 times n plus 1 times cn times x to the n plus 1. Good. And now I'm going to do the same kind of thing that I did over here. In other words, rewrite n squared as a falling power. So I can do that and I'll get the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n times n minus 1 x to the n. So I've rewritten n squared with n times n minus 1, but that means I've subtracted off an n. So I need to add that back in. So I have the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n x to the n. And notice, let's go ahead and point out this is because n squared is the same thing as n times n minus 1 plus n. In other words, we've rewritten n squared in this basis of falling powers. Okay, so I think that's a good place to stop this board. I'll bring this up and then we'll continue. Okay, so we're at this semi-familiar location where we have 1 minus x times b of x equals 2. I factored that 2 out. The sum n goes from 0 to infinity of n plus 1, c of n, x to the n plus 1. And then the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n times n minus 1 times x to the n. And then finally, the sum n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n. Okay, so now let's rewrite this right hand side a little bit. So I'm going to take this 2 and factor it out. And then I'm actually going to split this across the n. So I'm going to have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of n times c of n times x to the n plus 1 plus the sum n equals 0 to infinity of c n x to the n plus 1. Great. And then the next thing that I want to do is notice that this looks a lot like a second derivative. But this exponent would be, need to be 1 less than this n minus 1. In other words, it would need to be n minus 2. So let's go ahead and factor an x squared out. And then we can start that sum at 2 instead of at 1 because if we plug in 1, we get 0 there. So that's going to be n, n minus 1 times x to the n minus 2. And then we'll do something similar here, but it's factoring an x out. So we've got the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n, x to the n minus 1. And now those look like derivatives of geometric series just like we had before. Okay, so now I want to factor some stuff out of this. So this almost looks like the derivative of this guy right here. All we're missing is that we have an n plus 1 instead of an n minus 1. Notice if we take the derivative of this, we get an n out front, and then we'll have n minus 1. 
So, but we've got an n plus one. So we can fix that by factoring an n squared out. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got two and then we have x squared, the sum n equals zero to infinity of n c n x to the n minus one. So I factored that x squared out. And then notice I can factor an x out of this. And then it's just our generating function c of x. So we have the sum n times x to the n. Great, and now those are just derivatives of geometric series just like they were in a previous case. So this is equal to x squared times the second derivative of one over one minus x. And then this is x times the first derivative of one over one minus x. Okay, great, so now we're almost there. So notice that this is going to be two x squared. I'll go ahead and distribute this two through to both of these parts. And then this is the derivative of c of x. So let's write that dc dx, where that's this generating function right here. And then here we have plus 2x times c of x. So that's that guy right there. And then we have plus. So just like before, when we take the second derivative of this, we have to multiply by 2. So that'll give us 2x squared over 1 minus x quantity cubed. Then we take when we take the first derivative, that just ends up squaring that. So we have x over 1 minus x quantity squared. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and bring that to this point. I'll also insert my generating function c of x as it appears over here, which is x over 1 minus x cubed, and then we'll keep going. So we're almost done. So we've got 1 minus x times b of x is equal to 2x squared times the derivative of x over 1 minus x cubed. So that's the derivative of this generating function. Then we have 2x squared over 1 minus x cubed. That's 2x times this generating function. Another 2x squared over 1 minus x cubed. So that came from the second derivative of that geometric series expansion. And then x over 1 minus x squared. And again, that was the first derivative of the geometric series expansion. Okay, so now let's simplify this a little bit. So we can rewrite this as 2x squared. And then we'll take the derivative of this using the product rule, thinking of this as x times 1 over 1 minus x cubed. So let's see, that'll give us 3x over 1 minus x to the fourth. So that's what we get by taking the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x cubed. And then we'll have plus 1 over 1 minus x cubed. That's obviously the derivative of just x. Okay, now notice that these are like terms, so we can add them together. So we have 4x squared over 1 minus x quantity cubed. And then finally, we have this last term, which is x over 1 minus x squared. So now let's start building up the denominators. So notice my largest denominator is 1 minus x to the fourth, so I want to build everything to that. So that means I'll multiply this on the top and the bottom by 1 minus x squared, but that's the same thing as 1 minus 2x plus x squared, and that's going to turn this to a fourth. Then I can turn this to a fourth by multiplying by 1 minus x. And then I can turn this to a fourth by multiplying uh, 1 minus x as well. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. That's going to give me 2x squared here times, so now we have 3x minus x, so that's going to be 2x. So we have 2x plus 1 over 1 minus x to the fourth. And then we're going to have plus 4x squared minus 4x cubed over 1 minus x to the fourth. And this 2x squared is only hitting this thing right here. I should point that out. And then finally, we have plus. So notice that's going to be x cubed minus 2x squared plus x over 1 minus x to the fourth. Great. So now let's go ahead and take this 2x squared and multiply it in. So that's going to give us 4x cubed here and then a 2x squared here. Great. So now let's see if we can combine like terms. So notice we have 4x cubed and a minus 4x cubed. So those guys are going to cancel. Good. And then we have 2x squared and a minus 2x squared. So those are going to cancel. So that means we're left with x cubed 
plus 4x squared plus x over 1 minus x quantity to the fourth power. But that's not our generating function b of x. That's 1 minus x times our generating function b of x. So that allows us to write b of x as x cubed plus 4x squared plus x over 1 minus x to the fifth. But when comparing that to our generating function a of x, we notice that they are exactly the same. But two sequences have the same generating function if and only if they're the same sequences. So what that tells us is that a of n equals b of n for all values of n, but that's exactly what we wanted to show over here. So like I said at the beginning, this was an episode of our overkill series where we try very, very hard to prove a fairly simple result in a very difficult method. So if you have any other ideas for this series, post them in the comments.